Thursday night, Marnie Glickman. Fantastic. I'm so excited to be here. Same. Great to see you again. We missed you. Was it last week that you were not with us? What? what You're two? spacing out. I was so here last week. That's weeks right. Ago when you were in the yeah. car? I was stuck in Oregon last week. I was here, Jason. <laughs> but I know your mind is spinning because we were talking about how exciting it is that the vaccines seem fully available to adults in the next three months. I'm really excited to like roll up my arm and get one. How about you, Jason? I am too. It seems like, yeah, today was sort of a turning point. We, yeah. now I'm starting to hear about people getting vaccinated. So that's good. Michelle, that's did you get yours yet? I am fully vaccinated. Wow. Okay, well, we should start by saying, first of all, yes. we have two good friends with us today. And by virtue of their last names, Sue Tweston, Michelle Tweed, they were home roommates for their entire high school careers. And they are both now nurses or went on to become nurses. So Michelle is vaccinated. Sue? I still have antibodies. Oh. <laughs> I've had, I had COVID seven months ago. So, and I just had my blood checked. I still have antibodies. So I can't get it yet, but I gotcha. will. Yeah. So you can't get it until you have no antibodies? No, we just can't get it yet here in Minnesota. Okay. I don't work, I don't practice in a healthcare setting. Otherwise okay. I would be able to get it. Yeah. Well, so Sue, you're in the Twin Cities. Michelle, you're down in, in near Kansas City in Missouri. And... Yes. Um, how often are you guys in touch? Do you talk nursing stuff or what's the deal? <laughs> Go ahead. We're Facebook. We're it's it's strictly Facebook. Yeah, I would say I we rekindled with a lot of our classmates on Facebook and when you guys were trying to get people on the show, I was trying to see if we could get a bigger group of our um, people from homeroom on here because you guys talked about homerooms but for some reason, people are kind of scared about coming on the show, and I don't know why. You guys don't seem very scared to me. No. <laughs> no, not scary. <laughs> no, nothing scary. Spread the word. This is all good vibes here. Yeah. Okay, so we've we've covered this a little bit. Who, where, who was your homeroom teacher, and where was your homeroom? Do you even, I don't even remember. Do you remember? I used to honestly don't. Um, only every day you, for three years you went I to the I don't same remember. Place. But I think we we had more than one, I think. I don't remember I either. Think, okay, Michelle. I think we had more than one. I agree with that. I know we were on the second floor, and I know we were on the end towards the window with the stairwell. Yeah. Beyond that, I can't tell you what the room was. Yeah. I'm going to go like the doorway science. That, like that science the, upper, upper left. That was That's the where my locker area. was. Our lockers were over there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you were maybe in the science department, but you have no recollection of who your teacher was. Absolutely none. Were you That's in like a lab room, like with the black top mm -hmm. desks and stuff? No, or? we had regular desks. We weren't at a table. We weren't at like the, the um, what are they, where we did the sharks and pigs and stuff. We weren't there. Okay. And was your homeroom maybe pretty some... raucous or was it uh, pretty, did people keep to themselves? I'm, I don't know. I'm trying to unearth any information I can. Well, what was funny for me was um, my brother and Kathy Cheetah and Lisa, Kathy Cheetah's sister and Lisa Turner's brother all graduated together. Wow. And then we all graduated together. So they graduated like Cheetah Turner Tweston and we did Cheetah Turner Tweed Tweston. <laughs> Oh, so Kathy Cheetah <laughs> was in your homeroom. Mm -hmm. We'll yeah. have to get to her next. Okay, right. so you were in the homeroom together, no memories. That's fine. Um, we, were chill. we were chill. We didn't do much. Did you, so you both, you've both become nurses. Was that a trajectory you were on when you were in high school? Michelle, did you always want to be a nurse or did this occur later? Well, my path to becoming a nurse is probably a little different. Um, my dad was actually a Marine, and when I graduated high school, I had to figure out how to pay for school. And so I had taken 
the test and um, there was a lot of good incentives to go into the military at that time. And so he went ahead and visited the recruiters and at the end of the day, um, he scoped out which would probably be the best branch for educational benefits and based on wanting to go to college, what would work for me. And so then based on my scores, we went in and sat down with the recruiter and then at that point it was my job to have the conversation. Um, so I sat down with the recruiter and he said, so what do you want to do? And I said, I want to jump out of airplane. <laughs> and he you said, did? well, I did. That's what I wanted to do for a job. Okay. And he said, well, we don't have that here because it was an Air Force recruiting station. <laughs> he said, but the they closest fly thing the have... planes. They don't jump out of them. <laughs> so it was the it was the air guard out of um, the airport up there in Minneapolis. And because they're a division of the Air Force, he said, we don't have that here. He said, but we do have air evac, which was which was medical. And so long story short, that's where I started my career. And I ended up liking medical. And I said, well, if I really like this, then that's maybe where I, where I need to be. And then I've just bridged on it from there. Did you, uh, did you go anywhere abroad when you were in the military? Um, I have to go back and figure out what percentage it is, but I've been to like something like 16% of the countries of the world through wow. my career. Wow. Which, where did you spend? Okay. So answer any of these questions. Where did you spend the most time? What did you, what part of the world were you in that you enjoyed the most or that, that sort of stuck with you and stays with you still? Um, I was not active duty other than being activated for um, complex. So um, that technically was title orders and those types of things. Um, but because of my um, AFSC, I was able to jump on and be able to, and pulled also as well for duties that were a little less traditional. So I had um, opportunities that maybe the average person may not have had. So I probably spent the most time in um, Vokefield, Wisconsin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's by me. That's close. <laughs> yeah, right, right near Madison. That's yeah. probably where I spent the bulk of my time. Um, <laughs> For as far as like the number of times I went somewhere because I was um, helping support doing trainings up there a lot the last several years before I retired especially. And then um, as far as probably the places I like the most, I've, I've got to see a lot. I mean, Panama was really interesting and probably Muscat, Oman um, was were probably two of my top ones. But um, there were other places that were that were really interesting as well. Wow. Yeah, that's fantastic. Well, thank you for your service. Yeah. We've we've had a number of people in the service on the, some we've known about in advance and some that we've learned during the, the course of the, of the show. So that's, that's fantastic. Sue, how did you become a nurse? What was your- uh, So I went to Madison. Sorry, gotta give a shout out to Madison. Great point. Anyway. Um, I actually had, exactly, got to get my W. <laughs> um, I had no idea what I wanted to do when I got there. Uh, probably in sophomore years when I decided, and then you had to try and get in, and I honestly didn't get in. <laughs> and then I had to try and figure out another major really quickly, and then a week before classes started, they had an opening and I got in. But my mom was a nurse, so, and then turns out, like, my, both my grandparents, grandparents wanted to be nurses, so um, I actually tried to do anything but, and then it's just ended up being the right thing, and yeah, so. So you mentioned you're not a frontline nurse at this Correct. point. Correct, yeah. What, and we didn't cover this with Michelle, but what kind of nursing do you guys do? Yeah, I did inpatient care for about 17 years. So started as a nursing assistant at UW-Madison Hospital um, after graduation, worked in Milwaukee. And then I came back to Minneapolis, worked at Abbott for a few years. And then I worked at Mercy and Coon Rapids for about 10 years. And then I just said, uh, when your favorite days aren't patient care days, you need to do something else. So now I work at Medtronic and I do desk job, corporate America, um, FDA, you'd kind of call it complaint handling, um, but I do FDA reporting and, and um, we report 
my products are pacemakers, defibrillators, all that kind of stuff. And we do regulate regulatory reporting. So how about you, Michelle? What kind of nursing have you done? Um, because I had two career paths, I had my military career path and my civilian career path. Um, I have a lot of different variety, but um, a lot of critical care, and I'm currently doing medically complex pediatrics. Oh. Are you, um, doing, in, are you doing inpatient, Michelle? No, I'm doing outpatient at this okay. point. I, with my kids, that was a choice that I made so that I could be, have more traditional schedule and be able to um, have a more traditional family schedule for their events. Yep, exactly. So what does that involve? What's your, what's a, day, a typical day like for you doing that work, Michelle? Um, it's, um, it changes every day, but basically the kids that I take care of, most people think of as being inpatient because um, they don't think of them having to go home at night, but basically um, our families are amazing and um, our kids go home and they need someone to be able to be there um, providers when they're not in the hospital, but they have, um, for whatever reason, they have multi-system disorders and equipment and things like that. And so when they get a cold or they have earaches or if they need a physical or um, if the parents have questions because um, something's going on, we're the people that, that address that. Are you visiting a number of homes in a, in a typical day? No, we don't go to the homes. We're okay. in the office. Gotcha. So we okay. do anything from telemedicine to them coming to us to phone calls the whole gamut just like you would a regular office gotcha okay well that is interesting yeah i've always thought that would be kind of um one of the interesting aspects of working in medicine is that no two days are ever the same and you are yeah. sort of greeted well, with what you're greeted with every day and it kind of worked real well with and we i've because I have my complex history and doing critical care, I've done adults and kids before. We used a lot of Medtronic products, which is kind of where the overlap with Sue comes in too, because I did a lot of cardiac. <laughs> and so I know her products really well. <laughs> um, it kind of flowed very naturally over, to the, over that setting. Is Medtronic based in the Twin Cities? They are. Um, they started in Fridley, actually. Um, our it's complicated. Um, our now international, we're now international. So our financial base, our world headquarters is actually in Galway, Ireland. A lot of medical companies did that um, probably for tax reasons. Probably. Um, but yeah, a lot of, a lot of, there's a lot of medical companies, um, just companies in general that have facilities in Galway. So. Yeah, cool. <clears throat> but that's, yeah, it's, again, that's, been something that struck me about the Twin Cities. A friend of mine from college works for Boston Scientific, yeah. I want to say. And, um, you know, like you go to the state fair and you'll see like all these people with the same t-shirts. Yep. And what are the big, like Medtronics is a big one. Boston Medtronic, Scientific Boston, St. Jude are, are the big ones. Um, they actually call this area um, Medical Alley because there's so much, there's so many medical device companies around here. Um, Abbott now has um, Abbott, Abbott St. Jude, Boston, Medtronic. Um, those are the biggest ones in the cardiac realm. So, um, but a lot of them have different, um, like Medtronic has diabetes, neural spine, cardiac. Um, they merged with another company, which was actually funny. They merged with a company called Covidian. And I was in a meeting room. <laughs> I was in a meeting room. And I walked in and it was my best friend from senior year was in the conference room and she had just come on from Covidian. She was a junior, um, but it was just funny because I looked there, she's like, Tweston? I'm like, Kemi, are you kidding me? So there we were. So, yeah. um, while we're on professions, before the show, I always read the yearbook. And I noticed, Michelle, you were in DECA. Is that correct? That is correct. Do you have any... I was in OEA and then also in DECA after that. Well, I, I was just, I was not in DECA and a few people have had some interesting DECA stories or memories to share. Do you have any you want to share about that? It's okay. Um, I, I can't say that there was a single memory, but I will say it was a very, um, 
I don't want to, I don't know what the word is I want to describe it, but I would say it's probably the best word I can come up with is a very fun classroom because it was full of personality. Mm -hmm. There was every, pretty much everyone I remember being in that classroom is someone who was not afraid to be themselves. Hmm. That's a good way to think about it. Um, and DECA was like marketing club, right? So you, you guys came up with projects and, and that you competed in, right? There was a there was some sort of competition-based approach to well, that? De DECA, VICA, OEA, which OEA is now goes by different initials, they all um, had some of those similar contests that you could participate in. Um, I did do the contest with OEA. I didn't necessarily do too many of the contests with DECA. I pretty much switched over to DECA because that was the program that I was in, which allowed me to leave school to be able to go to work. Yeah. Okay, so let's go into that. <laughs> so you mentioned this before we went live, that you spent a lot of time working in the afternoons instead of being in school. Can you, what did you do? Where did you go? Well, I ended up only needing a half a credit my set that my senior year and it was only offered the second half of the year okay. so my senior year I only had to go to school for a half a credit but they required you to take so many classes mm -hmm. and so I just was like well I'm going to be here so I'm going to go ahead and um, enjoy being with my friends for the half a day but I don't necessarily want to hang out and do um, classes for the sake of classwork and so um not that i look back on it and it wouldn't have benefited me to take another typing class or whatever it was that i could have taken but i um, took the core classes that i could take and i i think i took typing and you know things like that and maybe social studies and business math or whatever because i'd already had all my math classes and then I went to work. And so I went to, I think I worked at that point at Target and I worked at the return desk. That right there was an interesting um, job. <laughs> yeah. And, um, you know, you talk about being nice to your servers and things like that right now during the pandemic. Back then it was be nice to the people at the return desk. And I'm sure that they are probably just as um, needing that appreciation now. People are not so nice to the people at the return desk. And you get and lots should, of crazy threats and crazy things come in. Right. And we should remind people, 1987, 1988, there were no scanning guns. You weren't able to just like look up these transactions on the uh, computer or whatever, right? It was a pretty manual process still at that point, I think. Well, it was, and and we had to look things up to see if people were on a theft list, and and if things had been a hot list item for shoplifting, we weren't able to take it back, and and it, if you didn't have a receipt, you know, there were certain restrictions, and if you did have a receipt, we could take lots of things back we shouldn't have. You know, if you bought it in 1972 and you had a receipt at that point, you could take pretty much anything back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Was, Which target it was, was it? The Knollwood one? Um, at that point, I think I was at the Knollwood one. And okay. then I also did some of the checkout stuff. But the, the return desk was, there were some crazy things that happened. Did you have bonfires like the dudes at Byerly's? <laughs> <laughs> we did not have bonfires, but I think that would have been a blast. Michelle, did you hear that last week? They were saying they had bonfires in the back of the Richdale Byerleys after work. They drink beer in the and have fires. Ballots. <laughs> I was. There were certain people that we ran around with in school, and and I'm going to bring him up because I think that at some point we need to. And he was really key in my high school years, and I and I am very sad that he's not no longer with us, but. Duffner was one of the one of the key ones that um, we spent a lot of time um, kind of running around with, not necessarily like hanging out at his house, but um, he was always one of the key people as well. And so there were times when he'd be working and we'd get done and and you know, it was like one of those like it doesn't hurt anybody kind of torment things. And I remember us bouncing cars sideways. And so Wait, what? Yeah, 
So you you would take there'd be cars and you would bounce the one in the middle sideways oh. so that they couldn't pull out of the spot. Okay. Yes. That's great. That is great. In the mall. I'm sorry. In the mall parking lot. Yeah. So like over in front of like Richdale or Devonies or places like okay. that. Or like I remember TPing cars because it just washed off, you know, things like that. So this is Brian Duffner just to clear this up. Yeah. 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 But you just remember him as Duffner. That's great too. I love that. That's, that's what <laughs> yeah. called him. And then, yeah. And I'm saying who our culprit and cl crime was with, it could have been, you know, it could have been Michelle or Michelle Moore, or it could have been Gretchen or it could have been, you know, one of assorted other people that, that were, you know, around I don't know who it would have been at that point but you know we just there there were several of us that rotated through and and you know those were some of the things that we did as teenagers and you know it was one of those things that it wasn't destroying anybody's property it just was having fun messing with them yeah uh Sue do you have memories of vandalism or mild uh property crimes that um <laughs> Okay, so I didn't, I, I want to say it was prom night that I didn't go to prom. I may have TP Coach McDonald's house. Oh, well, that's an interesting target. That's kind of a oh, student on teacher football. crime. Yeah. If anyone remembers who I did that with, I'm trying to remember. But yeah, I just remember TP in Coach McDonald's house. That was probably it. Well, McDonald had a didn't wasn't McDonald's son only like a year younger. He was like us? a junior when we were seniors. Yeah. Yeah. So that's legit. You could get away with that. Yeah. Saying you were, it was the kid that you were going after. Yeah. That's yeah. so funny. And we, always, and we always did our friends, so that you know it wasn't like a stranger. There was yeah. a coach at the the football coach at West Junior High when I was there was Mr. Prodzik, who was a, you guys wouldn't remember this. You guys all went to, Michelle, did you go to West? I don't remember. I think so. Oh. At this point between. Yeah, you went West, to Glen Lake. So you went, you went to West Junior High School. I would say I could drive there, but I don't remember what right. it was called. Um, so Prodzik was a, was the football coach and also a gym teacher. And he was an interesting guy. And he, um, he played football at the U of M, but he drove a Volkswagen bug. And one, you like when you went to practice, when you played on a sports team at West, you had to sort of stand outside and wait for the activity buses to come. And that mm -hmm. was just a mess. Like imagine, you know, 300, you know, kids at the height of puberty, just like waiting for a bus to wait, waiting for buses to come to take them home after they've just finished swimming, playing volleyball, playing football, playing soccer, whatever. And so a bunch of us one day, a bunch of football players, and I played soccer, and a bunch of the guys figured we could probably pick up Prodzik's car. Like we could, if a bunch of us got around it, we could pick it up and carry it. And we did. And we, I think we moved it, you know, six feet or something like that. But anyway, well, yeah. Since we're veering into sports, I have a note from our special sports correspondent, Eric Haugen, to Susan. I'm gonna read it. One of the things we did not discuss on the hockey reunion show was how great Hopkins fans were. We had such great support from our fellow students, both at home and on the road. I had Spanish with Sue. I remember her telling me junior year she was going to go to every hockey game we had that year. And I think she did. I believe the only game she missed was when we played up at Virginia on the Iron Range. That is true. So that tell us true. about, we, we want to hear about you as an athlete, but first we're going to talk about you as a sports fan. I absolutely love sports. I love sports. So this is Galway. I think it's Galway soccer, football. Sorry, it's football. Um, I absolutely, okay, so not to get anyone mad, I am a Packer fan, a Packer fan, but I am a Badger fan above all else. So I follow my Badgers everywhere they go. So I'm a huge JJ Watt fan and Derek and TJ and Russell Wilson and everybody who is a Badger, football, basketball, whatever. Um, love the Minnesota United. I love balloons, um, soccer, if you don't know who they are. 
Um, we just got season tickets this last year and have yet to sit on our seats because the season was <laughs> closed to people. So we actually flew out to Oregon. Um, cool. Marty, we flew out to, well, we flew out to Seattle and went and saw them in Oregon last February. So that's the only game I got to see in person last February. So mm. yeah, still love sports. Um, I played fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, um, everything, volleyball, basketball, softball, track. And then I had foot surgery after ninth grade. And so that kind of put everything on hold for a year. And then I, I was telling these guys, I, I played soccer. And if anyone here was on the soccer team, I'm sorry, because I had commitment issues and I just didn't like to go to school. So I was on varsity soccer as a goalie and I have the time I didn't go to the games, but so. <laughs> Yeah, it's wild because I got to think that if you're a young woman who plays now today on the Hopkins varsity soccer team, your life has probably been soccer, right? Like Correct. Play yeah. We had 12 months a year. And we had some of the younger kids on the team because soccer wasn't that old for us, especially for the girls. Um, so we had a lot of the really younger kids, the ninth graders who were varsity because they're the ones that were actually playing. Most of us didn't start until high school. Um, we just didn't, we didn't have um, soccer. So, I mean, yeah, I even went and saw Patty because she was on, I'm sure you guys have talked to about it. She was on the U of M club team in high school. And I actually saw her at a, play a game at the U of M um, for hockey Um but yeah, it was just a different world. And you were able to play so many different sports because we didn't specialize. You know, right. there wasn't traveling. There wasn't this. We didn't start fast pitch until we actually started in junior high. Now they start them at like second or third grade or something crazy like that. So. Yeah, funny. Um, so do you remember... Um, I was trying to, re we were talking with this, the guys on the hockey team. We yeah. talked to Eric too a little bit about, about that idea of being, of going to hockey games as a fan. Um, because hockey obviously was a huge cultural thing in Minnesota, um, mm -hmm. you know, and has only gotten, gotten more to that point. Do you remember what you enjoyed about going to high school hockey games? I just love seeing people that I knew playing, um, just going and having a great time. I mean, go from Golden Valley, it was not close to nope. go to the ice arena. And so, I mean, I just remember it, it like took like 30, 35 minutes. It felt like to get out there, um, but just going and supporting them and, and, you know, it, they were a blast to watch. So. Okay. I have a side note since I'm not a sporty person, but Susan, did you ever skate on the ice rink at Lions Park? Absolutely. Yeah. So the rocket slide. Mm -hmm. So we had at Lions Park this, I mean, ice rink, and even I skated there. Do you have any other Golden Valley Lions Park memories? Oh, my know? gosh. They used to have a summer program. So um, they used to have a summer program where they actually had, like, teenagers. Um, and you could just go there and hang out for the whole day. And we would go and go to Twins games. We would go to get A&W. We would go do all these things. Um, we would do crafts, we would do water stuff. Um, Lions Park had this big giant rocket slide. I think it's, well, I don't know if it's there. Joel Evans always loves to post about that. Um, but I lived at that park. I yeah. lived every summer at that park. Did yeah. you do the, that summer kind of summer program, Michelle, growing up? I spent a ton of time at the park. You guys were talking about hockey and I, I totally remember taking my figure skates and playing hockey my figure skates because I didn't have hockey skates. Mm -hmm. We did so much at the park all the time. What was your park? I can't even tell you what the name of it was. I just remember being there. It didn't matter what season it was. There was always something going on. There were so I, many park programs. Yeah. I This, again, is one of these things where this thing comes up in a show that I hadn't thought about in decades. But Hopkins also had, you know, a summer program Mm -hmm. And the one I lived very, the, the closest park to my house was Gatewood School. And um, I, you could go up there and yeah, the same, it was like not very, I think there was one day a week, maybe Friday where there was a trip, mm -hmm. a field trip. Mm -hmm. But prior to that, you, you know, any other day, you just go, you show up and stuff is happening. Mm -hmm. And um, I think I remember one year, like going with a friend or whatever, and this college kid or high school kid running, it was like, um, 
you know, if you want to keep coming to this, you got to bring, you got to bring a permission slip and like $5. Yeah. For like the whole summer. summer. Yeah. It was crazy. (laughs) Well, I want to read, we have a lot of people chiming in. I want to share this with Michelle and Susan. So the Golden Valley people are here. Yes. We have, right? Joel Evans is here. Yes. The rocket slide. I want one today. Sheila Schraber, another Golden Valley guest. She was on our bus. Mm-hmm. On our bus. Ice skating at Lions Park was the best. We have Karen Hintermeister reminding us Wesley Park for the North Corner Golden Valley. That is Valley. true. Yep. And Natalie Ojeda, George, and Golden Oaks Park. I don't... It's right by Wesley, right up, one, right up Winnetka, and then you turned left. Okay. And then Facebook actually hides the other things. There's other people here sharing memories of Duffner, but I can't read them because it, it, Zuckerberg's hiding them. Well, Chris, Chris Camp is here, of course, and we're great to see, it's great to see Chris again, of course. <laughs> and she says uh, she hung out with Duffner all the time. So I'm hours before he passed away, really miss him. Um, lost three people that week. So yeah, that's really, that's that's really sad. I played on a little league team with Duffner. His dad and my dad went to high school together. And um, it's funny because I always thought Duffner was a good guy, but you, I don't know if you guys ever had this situation where it was like his dad and my dad went to high school together. And so they were like, hey, you guys should be buddies. And so immediately we were like, I am not going to be that kid's buddy. I don't care what he, I don't care what, who says what, (laughs) because you're telling me not happening. Um, well, is there any? Is there anything you wanted to ask each other? Or anything about your memories when you were thinking about the show that you wanted to share with us? <laughs> I got nothing, oh, Michelle. What do you got? <laughs> well, I guess I, I probably the biggest thing, and I'd like to share, and I don't know that it's directly to you guys, but just there's a lot of people, like I said, that that were kind of hesitant to come on, but you know there's so many people that I would like to hear from that I want to know just what you did, what you're, what you're doing now. And, you know, there were a lot of things that in high school that, you know, I have a lot of high school memories that were not the best or not the greatest, but there were, there were bits and pieces of high school that still make me smile. And there were people from my past that make me smile, but that doesn't mean that they were all great, but, I still have enough that, you know, it is worth going back and talking about the ones that were really wonderful. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to know what what you're doing now. And it's fun to be able to know that. And so I'd like to see if we could get some of these other people to um, be willing to come in and just tell us what they're doing now, even if they don't necessarily want to spend a whole lot of time talking about um, high school. Yeah. I think a lot of people think, well, I'm not doing anything that special. I'm not doing anything that cool, but everybody's doing stuff that's cool. Every, I mean, I in some ways, I think that everybody's got cool, and we've all been away from each other now for 30 years, so at least a couple of things that you've done in that 30-year period is yep. really funny or really cool or really interesting and agreed with you on that, Michelle, that we it is just immensely interesting, continually interesting to me to just find out what people are doing. What, where where do you live? What do you? Well, I really appreciate that, Michelle. There are now several people, I can see it now, have a question for both of you about the here and now. Sure. There are varieties on this question. Chad Alt asks, Annie and Frank, are curious about your family's pets. Inquiring minds would like to know. Karen Hintermeister also has a similar question for both of you. Would love to know about your family's kids and pets. So for both of you, your last questions are families now, kids and pets. Who wants to go first? So why don't you go ahead and start? All right, so I'm married to my husband, Kevin. We have two kids. Our daughter, Kylie, is a senior in college at Bethel University right here. 
Um, son just graduated from high school. He was one of those COVID seniors that graduated during COVID. So they got chipped out of their last semester, went to spring break and never went back. So, um, so he's going part-time to a tech school, trying to figure out what he wants. We have, um, he was roaming around here. We have Woody, who's a chocolate lab mutt. And I have uh, two cats, Junie and Oliver. Awesome. How about you, Michelle? Um, I have two kids. I have one that is graduating this year. He is um, thinking he's going to go to community college to get an associate's degree in HVAC, and then he's going to go um, to try and get his um, pipe fitter uh, apprenticeship so that he can um, work on like HVAC um, electrical type units when Trades. he's done. Good job. And then, um, and he is one of those COVID seniors this year who's um, going to in-person school right now, but it's definitely different than other years. So we'll see how college is going to go with all the vaccines coming out. And then he is my esports kid who definitely has his own unique personality, um, but he's very into video games and electronics. So I think trying to do electronics is going to be up his alley. So hopefully this will be a good career match for him. But he's also very into Boy Scouts and working on his Eagle Scout project right now. And he's worked in the Eco Lodge down at Scout Camp for the last several summers. So he's got multiple pets. So at this point in our, ha in our house, we have turtles, a snake, and a gecko that belong to him because he hauls them back and forth to teach. Now oh, that's very cool. And, and then I have a 15-year-old um, freshman daughter who is my athlete who um, is currently whittled her sports down. So now she is <laughs> um, plays basketball for fun and to stay in shape. And then her, her core sport is competitive softball. And then um, we don't quite know what her plans are, but um, she is the primary caregiver for our two dogs that we have here at the house. Nice, the non-reptiles in your house. She's got to... Yeah. <laughs> That's, great. That's great. That's a lot of animals. <laughs> yeah. You guys might be up there. It, well, Steve Simon, right? His his wife is sort of a foster parent of many cats, I think. Um, maybe other animals too, but... That's well, good. once he stops going back and forth to the ecology lodge, that um, reptile will decrease. We're, we're thinking we're going to part with the turtles this year um, <laughs> because once he starts college, then we probably won't spend as much time teaching ecology. Right. That's really cool, though. That's That sounds like fun. Um, Marnie? Yes, I have the schedule up. Oh, that's you no fun. Know? You want to know what's <laughs> happening next? Yes. Who's 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 going to be on next week? Next week, we have a killer show. Drew Falkman and Wally McLaughlin. March 16th, Laura Roth Green, Marcy Hall, and Julie Steelman. April 6th, Bonnie Blader and Mystery Guests. April 13th, The Softball Team with special correspondent Patty Hegry Walters. April 20th, Katie Keenan Pals. May 11th, The Football Team. May 18th is my 50th birthday party, Bring Your Own Cake. And then we're working on Jim Keen and the Palms. And every single one of you who hasn't been on, your turn is coming. That's right. Prepare for your close up. Mm -hmm. um, and Jason, this is episode 41. I know. We're zeroing in on 50. Crazy. Um, yeah, I in my mind, we started this in March, but in fact, we didn't start it until like June. But you know. May 19th. May, May 19th. Okay, yeah. even better. Our anniversary. Um, is there anything else that you guys wanted to talk about that we didn't cover in the show? I don't know. I think one of my things is just because I see it so many times from the North people, I was such a huge Pete Graff fan. Oh my gosh, that man, he was my, he was my favorite teacher, I think, okay. of all time. Well, that's so interesting because I think so too. And I 
was sort of what would you call it scoping him out on the internet and i think he's that, they don't call it that stalking. it's called stalking. Stalking. <laughs> stalking. and i think he's it's still alive him. and i yeah. wrote to him a few weeks ago asking him without jason's permission if he might want to come on the show but with your permission, I'm going to, I'm going to stalk him a second time. We can have a junior high teacher on, right, Jason? With some I see no here. reason why not. Yeah. Okay. yeah. He seems he did to be very everything. popular. Right? He did everything. I mean, yeah, I had him, I had him for, I don't think I had him for English. I had him for journalism. I had him for judo, yeah. samurai. Samurai was my highlight. We got to go on the yeah. trip. Um, and then he was my fast pitch coach for like two years. So yeah. Yeah, I mean that was a lot of time. So I had I was the I like him so much that I got to be the first base coach for the first fast pitch softball team since I can't catch a ball. And I did journalism and judo and English. I was like around him all the time. Yep. We'll see what we can do. Yeah, and then he became the media specialist. Something like that at, at North. All right, I'm looking forward to meeting this guy. Sounds great. Everybody loves him. Anything um, you want to share, Michelle, before we close it up? I think we've covered quite a bit, really. <laughs> right. <laughs> Thank you so much, both of you. I've really enjoyed hearing everything you wanted to share about your lives now and your careers and your service and your family. So I really appreciate you maybe going out of your comfort zones and coming on KHOP 88. Thanks guys. Thank, Thank you guys. You. Thanks to everybody watching on Bye. Facebook. And uh, yeah, we'll see you all next week. Be safe.